Okay, the last thing that we're going to look at today are species interactions within ecosystems. The first one is competition. There's competition in any ecosystem because resources are going to exist in limited supply. There are two types of competition. We have intraspecific, which is um, competition between members of the same species. So that would be um, two males of the same species competing for a mate, or two birds of the same species competing for a nesting site. Interspecific um, is between competition between two or more different species. Um, for example, in a forest, uh, plants compete for light. Well, the trees are usually going to outcompete the smaller plants. Um, so one adaptation a certain species has, in a deciduous forest where the trees lose their leaves, uh, there are certain plants that come out in early spring so they can get the sunlight when there's no leaves. Snowdrops and primroses are two examples of flowering plants that have an early spring life cycle. When we look at inter, or sorry, we'll look at intraspecific first. Um, this is competition between members of the same species that can lead to logistic growth, which starts off exponential. We see our J curve, but then once um, the resources um, reach comp carrying capacity because there's a limited amount of resources in that ecosystem, we see the population level out. Now, if we look at interspecific, competition between two different species, one of two things is going to happen. Either they're going to balance each other and we see logistic growth, or we get what is called the principle of competitive exclusion. So one species that outcompetes the other will reach logistic growth, where the other one will see a crash and they are excluded. So either they are going to um, migrate out of the ecosystem or their population will crash. So what happens when two niches overlap? Um, either one species is going to have to move away, they will shift their feeding habits, or they'll see their population decline and possibly become extinct. One example of shifting feeding habits, uh, we have organisms that feed during the day, and then we have nocturnal organisms that feed during the night. So two species that feed on the same type of prey can survive in the same ecosystem. So that brings us to the predator-prey relationship. Um, another type of species interaction is called predation. So that's when you have a predator that feeds on prey. Does not live in, uh, if a predator lives in um, the prey, that's called parasitism. Um, but the predators can actually benefit the prey because they can eliminate the sick and the aged members of that species. Herbivory is another term um, that refers to herbivores eating plants not really a predator-prey relationship, but it's still a higher trophic level eating at a lower trophic level. We can also describe these types of relationships as either top-down or bottom-up control, uh, depending on which layer of the, or which level of the, the food web is controlling the numbers. For example, let's say that we have a population of rabbits. They have more food in the spring, so in the springtime their population thrives. Well, we're also going to see a rise in the number of predators that eat the rabbit because they have more of a food source. And then when the winter time comes and their food source shrinks, the numbers of rabbits shrink and then their predators shrink as well. That is called bottom-up control because it's controlled by the lower trophic level. Okay, our last type of species interactions are symbiosis. And there are three types that we're going to concentrate on. The first is parasitism. Um, that's where the parasite benefits and the host is harmed. So you're either going to have a parasite living on or in a host. Um, that's things like tapeworms. Tapeworms live in your stomach and actually harms the host. Heartworms and dogs and cats would be another example. Mutualism is when both species benefit. If you've seen Finding Nemo, the relationship between the sea anemone and the clownfish. The sea anemone provides protection. The clownfish um, actually eats some of the bacteria that lives on the sea anemone. Lichens are a mutualistic relationship. It's where an algae and a fungus live together. Uh, pollination uh, spreads. When we spread pollen, that helps the plants grow, but it also um, helps the bees, makes honey for us. Uh, the, the last one is commensalism. This is where one of the species benefits and it does not harm or help the other. 
barnacles that live on the side of a whale. They attach themselves. It gives the uh, barnacle a place to live, doesn't harm the whale, doesn't help it either. Um, there, another example that's mentioned in your text is the redwood sorrel, which is a shrub that lives at the base of the redwood tree. The shade of the redwood provides protection for the, for the shrub, but the redwood is neither helped nor harmed. All right, so those are a few of the species interactions. We'll look at some examples of these organisms in class.